Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know to make a professional Facebook business page. So if you're an absolute beginner and you know nothing about this, then this is the video for you. Now, if you do already have a Facebook business page and maybe you clicked on this by accident, my only request is that on the way out, you please click the like button so that other people who are beginners will not miss this content and will still be able to find it. Now, for those of you stuck around, congratulations. You're starting your first Facebook business page which is a really big step. It really means a lot. And it's more important now than ever before, because maybe a couple years ago, a lot of small businesses could get away with not having a Facebook business page. These days with everybody using their phone so much, pretty much every business should have a Facebook business page, especially the small businesses with a physical storefront, because so many people out there are going to be looking for reviews and menus and hours and prices and everything else like that. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up your own Facebook business page, it's honestly really easy to do. So by the end of this video, like I said, you'll have a full blown professional Facebook business page. Now, with that being said, guys, let's jump into this video. We have a lot to talk about. All right, so here we are on my desktop and the first thing you wanna do is actually open up whatever browser you like. So it doesn't matter if you're using a laptop, a desktop, Windows, Mac, doesn't matter. Just open up whatever browser you like. So I'm using Safari here, obviously Chrome or Firefox or really anything would work. And you wanna go to facebook.com and you need to sign into your personal profile and if you don't have a personal profile, just create one. It takes a couple seconds to, you know, put in your name, your email and your password. But the reason is we have to actually start from our personal profile here in order to make the business page. It's just what Facebook requires uh, just for the sign in and everything like that. But eventually I'll show you how you can actually push this over to a Facebook business manager account and kind of separate it a little bit more from your personal profile. But regardless, you have to start from a personal profile. So what we want to do is actually across the top, you'll see this bar following it over. You should see a create button, the little plus icon right here. So if we click on that, it'll give us a drop down menu and you want to click on page. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that Facebook really changed the way this looks. So you'll see that now we actually have on the top right, we have our mobile or our desktop view. I think that's a really cool thing to have. And the editor is just a lot different than it was in years past. So that's why I wanted to make this video now. If you saw last year's tutorial or any others, you'll probably know that they, they look slightly different. All the settings should still be pretty similar, but just in different locations. So the first thing we wanna do from here is go up to these fields on the left side. So starting off with your page name, this is obvi obviously going to be your business. So we're gonna say Santrell Steaks. Say we're like a cheesesteak truck uh, or like cheesesteak food stand or something like that. And the next thing is actually your category. And your category is something that I always recommend people make it as specific as possible because, you know, Santrell Steaks, you don't want to just say store, you want it to be more specific so that when people are searching for restaurants or food trucks, then your category, if you're in that category, you're more likely to appear higher in their search. On top of that, when somebody sees your page, they know right away, as you can see, the category is going to show up right there they'll know right away exactly what you are. So here we can say restaurant and you'll see that restaurant shows up there, but you know, sometimes it's better to search a couple other terms that might be more specific. So if we say maybe like food, food truck, there we go. So look, food truck right there is an example. That's what we can have. And it'll show up right there as a food truck. Now we could have up to three different categories. And so, you know, I do recommend populating them and having a few more. Usually only your first one's going to show up right there, but let's just say restaurant, restaurants, another one. And we can also say maybe food stand, food stand. See if we have it, there we go, food stand. Okay, so now we have those three categories, but the first one you type in is going to be the only one appearing on the top. The other two will still be valuable on your page to help for ranking and to help for people identifying what your page is. Then we can go down to the description. You have a limit of 255 characters, so you can't write a huge paragraph, but I recommend writing as much as you can within 255 characters. Just make it very telling of what your, what your business is all about, what your page is about, and why people should be interested in your page. So I'm gonna type that out right now. So, all right, so something like that should probably be fine for this page, and then we can hit create page, and it's going to prompt us to add the other two images, so the profile photo, as well as the, the big wallpaper right there. And it might take a second to actually go and create the page. There we go, it was created. So now we can add a profile picture. Now, profile pictures, I already have a couple images here. The problem is this one's actually a square and that's going to show up as a circle right there. So we're just gonna use it anyway, but I recommend definitely making sure that you don't have this issue. It's gonna cut it off and just really not look good. Of course, you could be using like canva.com is something that I usually recommend. I have a tutorial on that as well. If you guys wanna see how to make your own logos, but you know, assuming a lot of businesses out there already have a logo that's fitting in a round circle right there, then you shouldn't have a problem. 
The next thing is to add a cover photo. Again, this is these are both optional, but I really highly recommend it. It's going to be a huge help for your page because that's what people can really see when obviously when they visit your page or even before they visit your page when they're just looking at the search results. And so having an appealing picture and an appealing wallpaper will definitely help. They'll, they'll go a long way. So for this one, being that we sell cheesesteaks, I'm just going to use this as the background. And if you don't like it, you can actually adjust it. So we can go and drag to reposition this, drag it up and down. So we'll just say like right there looks pretty good. And so there we go. Now we have those two images. We can click save on the bottom left and that'll bring us to the next page. So you can see right now, this is what our page is actually going to look like when people visit. And we have a lot of stuff on the left side. I'm gonna go through that and show you guys how to actually customize this because we are far from done right now. This is where a lot of people usually call it and they say, yep, I got a page. And this is how Facebook pages just fail. They don't really do what they're supposed to because they're missing some really essential things. So the first thing that I recommend doing once you have your page looking like this is actually going and adding a call to action. So a button is supposed to be essentially what is your Facebook business page all about? What is the objective of it? Why are you making it? Is it to direct traffic to your website? Is it to get bookings? Is it to get people to order? Whatever it is, they have a lot of different options here. And so I think Facebook does a great job of making this as custom as you need it to be and having a big call to action button right on the top. So for this restaurant, maybe we just want to order food. Obviously, like I said, go read through these. It makes sense for different businesses to do different things, but we're going to say order food. And so ordering food, it's going to direct to a website. I'm going to make a full tutorial on how to make like a food ordering website. If you guys want to see that, I mean, obviously not everyone's making a restaurant page right here. So we're just going to type in santrellmedia.com and we are going to say save. And so there we go. So now we have our button. It shows up right there. And the next thing is actually to make sure that button works. So we can go and say, test the button. It'll open up in a new page. And if we did it right, there we go. It brings us over to santrellmedia.com. So it's definitely important to test that to test that so you don't have that sending off to some error 404 page or something like that. So the next thing I recommend doing is actually going to create a username. This is how people can find you. It makes it easier to share your page. Just say, hey, look up Santrell Stakes on Facebook or tag us at Santrell Stakes on an image. Or you can have it so that you can go to facebook.com slash Santrell Stakes. You can do whatever you want. So we're assuming we're going to make this Santrell Stakes is going to be our username. And, and then you have to click away, get a little green check mark, and then click create username. Now, right here, this is what I was expecting. Sometimes this happens, it's really 50 50. Sometimes I make pages and it lets me add a username immediately. And right now it's saying that this page is not eligible. Sometimes Facebook gets a little buggy and they want you to have like 100 likes on here or they want you to have just a little bit more time. So if it doesn't let you make a username, don't worry about that. Just come back in a week or two after you start having some more likes and more engagement and some more content out there and you'll be ready to go with adding that. But you'll see, looking at our page then, we have these little tabs right here. Remember these, these are going to be important, and I'll show you later on exactly how to change them. But we have three showing, and then we have a little more tab for the rest of them. So obviously the ones showing up right there should be your most important things. And then as we go down, you'll see that we have uh, just some other posts and engagement stuff down here. This is what it's going to look like. The about section, notice how this is completely empty. We're going to fill that out as well. And it's going to show us, it's only showing us the insights. Other people wouldn't see that, obviously. And so let, let, let's start off on the left side. Now, on the left side here, we have home. This is where we are right now. We can go to inbox, and this is going to be your messages from Facebook, as well as Instagram direct. Uh, and so you can connect Instagram. I'll show you that later in the video. You can also see the comments and other things like that down here. And so I'm not going to get into the messenger because we're going to touch on that later in the video, but you can actually go into some advanced settings with how you want your messenger to react when people visit you. Let's click on our little name on the top left here. It'll bring us back to the home page. And then we can go down resources and tools. It's kind of just a forum. It's an open blog where there's just a lot of different things that you can use, a lot of articles on how to make your page better. So if you're, if you're bored, go and read through that. You can manage jobs. I'm not going to do that right now. We can go to notifications. It'll just tell us some basic stuff. And then we can go down. Insights is going to be an important one eventually, but not yet. So let's just show you that real quickly. Insights, you'll see that we have a bunch of different tabs showing up here. You can see followers, likes, reach, page views, just tons and tons of different analytics in which e with each one, you can go into like some really advanced stuff from like the gender to uh, the location of people and the date. And you can really learn a lot about who your audience is. Eventually, once you start getting traffic, this should be important. This is really important to be looking at this to improve your page and actually learn about what's working and what's not working. 
But then we can go down, skipping these. These are all kind of, the page quality is going to be just like a quick little health check. You, you got the green check mark, meaning you don't have any copyright problems. And then the majority of what we're doing is really going to be in these last two. So edit page info is going to be extremely important. This is what people miss out on. And so we're going to start off here. So we have our name, we have our description. We don't have a username. Remember, Facebook was weird. They didn't like us doing that. Let's just try it again. So let's just type that in. And it's going to say not available. Again, it doesn't want us to have one right now. Eventually, you can do that. I'm just going to delete that. But going down, we have the categories, as I mentioned before. So we have our three categories. If you ever want to change them, page info is where you find that. You can add a phone number or you can just hide that and say we don't have a phone number. You can add an email. You can add a website. You can add a physical address. If you're an online business, maybe you don't have a physical address. But I'm just going to say for mine, we do have a physical address. And we are going to be 123 South Street, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, PA. There we go. And so we'll have our address showing up so that people can find us. And service area, this is going to be less important for us unless we deliver or maybe if you're a landscaping company or something like that, you can add your service area um, for the general, just for people to know, like, you know, if they find a landscaping company that's 100 miles away, that might be too far. Then we can go down hours, you can select what your hours are. And this next one, I think this is new this year. I don't remember seeing this in the past. Maybe I just ignored it. But this is going to be especially important, I think, with the new like the pandemic and everything going on. So some places were closed or open with some different things going on. We're operating as usual. We're just going to say that right there. Then we can go down and add some little products and privacy policy and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that right now. But that's everything for page info. Very easy to fill this out. I think they really made it a nice, clean interface here. And then settings, admittedly, is a little bit more intimidating. And this is probably where we're going to spend the majority of the rest of this video, because this is where you can really tailor your page to make sure it's as effective as possible, reaching the largest audience and doing exactly what you want it to. Now, starting off with general, this one, read through this on your own time, because it's going to be some things that depending on what your business is, you might want to have an age restriction, you might want a profanity filter, you might want to demoderate stuff, have some words that are that are being blocked so people can't comment certain words on there. And you could use that for whatever you want, whatever words you, you just don't want on your page. And so you have some things like that. Going down, we have messaging. We have some really advanced settings here. This is what I mentioned before when we went into notifications for Messenger. You can actually really customize this quite a bit. So what I like to do is actually go down to starting a conversation. So that's going to be down in this section right here. We can show a greeting. So when people will go onto your Facebook business page, then it'll automatically show them like a little thing will pop up and say, hey, how's it going? This is this is us. Like, welcome to our page. And so we can change what that custom message is by clicking change. So changing that, you can see that we have a little custom field there. So it's going to say hi, and then whatever the per whatever the name is of the recipient, it's going to be their full name. But you could change it if you wanted to. So let's change that and instead add personalization. And maybe we just want the first name. So we could say, hi, Mike, thanks for getting in touch with us. And let's get rid of the on messenger. Don't really care about that. And then please send us any questions you might have or yeah, something like that. Sure, we could just say that. That's fine for now. Obviously, it could be different for anything. You'd say, let us know if you want a quote or if you have any questions or whatever. And you can add personalizations, like I said, besides just first name. You can have like a link to a Facebook page, your full name or their full name rather, and the address as well. So we are going to click save. And that is our little greeting right there. Now, your messenger URL is going to be an easy way for people to, if they want to send you a message, they can just go to m.me slash and this should be Santrell Stakes. It should be the username, which is another reason I wanted to have a username. But Facebook, again, sometimes gets weird and doesn't let you have a username right away. So for now, we just have this big, ugly, like 20 digit number there. Going down here, we have, you can add Messenger to our website. I'm not going to do that right now. And then during Messenger conversations, you can have automated responses. So following this up, if you just say, hey, send me a question. And let's just say you don't look at Messenger all the time. Maybe you check it once an hour. Maybe it's on your phone as a notification. You see it whenever you see it. Then down here, you can have an automated response just to kind of keep the person from leaving your, your, your Facebook page. So if we go and set that up, it'll bring us over here. And so we can edit the message. So we can have instant reply and we're going to edit our instant reply. The timing is sent instantly as soon as they do something. And we could say, hey, thanks for reaching out to us. We could say... Here, let's just delete all this. Hey, thanks for your question. 
All right, so we can add that right there. And so we can just basically say like, hey, thanks for checking out our page. Uh, feel free to browse around for the time being. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And you could throw in maybe a discount code if you want, 10% uh, off, just to just to keep people around, make them a little happier. Because sometimes if they just send a message to you and it just goes out into cyberspace and they never get a response, like it's very discouraging. And it's better to not have Messenger at all than to have a Messenger where you are not responsive at all. Now, there's other things down here. Of course, we can have some different messages for like appointment rem reminders, uh, follow-ups, page recommendations, like stuff. We have a lot of stuff going on here. But for now, this is all I'm going to get into as far as Messenger goes. So if we go back up here, let's get back to where we were. Go to Santrell Stakes, go down to Settings, and we were in Messaging. So after Messaging, you saw we have all this. We can go down to Page Info. And again, this kind of circles back. It's just a redundancy here. This is what we already saw uh, from the shortcut before. So we already edited all of this. Going down templates and tabs. This is what I said you have to remember in the very beginning. The three tabs that were shown were home, offers, and reviews. And then the rest of these that are dark, so these are gray, but the rest of them that are dark were in the drop down menu. So you really want to make sure that your first three are the most important things for your business. So we can go down here and say that maybe maybe something else like services would be a good one. Maybe that'd be like our menu. And you can always like edit what these actually are. Um, so we can go and maybe change. Uh, maybe about us is going to be an important one. Maybe we don't want offers at all. So you can drag this down here to the last and you can just disable it entirely. So we're going to disable that, disable that one. Uh, we are going to disable events. Maybe we don't have events going on. And so maybe this is what we want. We want about, we want reviews. And then below that, we're going to have these couple things right there. And so you can go and this will automatically save. And this is our current template right now. You could also change it because different different uh, things would be, you know, having a different lineup there. So obviously a nonprofit, a venue, they wouldn't be recommending the same tabs. But of course, you can customize this like I just showed you. Going down, we have event ticketing. I'm not going to get into that because you have to set it up with Eventbrite. Notifications is something that, again, this is what I think is interesting. When people set up their first Facebook business page, one of the first things you realize is that it is nothing like having a personal Facebook account because your notifications, you'll just have so many more notifications and it just gets really annoying and it's a big distraction. So I recommend disabling a lot of the notifications. You can go down here and say, maybe we don't care if there is a new follower on the page. Maybe we don't care about new likes. We don't care about um, edits, new shares. We don't care about that stuff. Maybe we do care about page mentions. And we can also go down here and say, hey, you know what? I don't want notifications every single time something happens. That's a distraction. I'm making cheesesteaks, you know? So let's go down and say, get one notification every 12 to 24 hours. And then you can change it. You don't want emails. You don't want text messages. And so this is how I'd like to set up my notifications. We can go down to advanced messaging. I'm not going to get into that because obviously, like I said, Messenger, you have some really advanced things you can do. If you have high volume messages uh, in the beginning, you don't really need to set up any of that stuff. It's not really that important. But we can go down to page roles. If you have a larger team, this might be something that's appealing to you. You can add other people as either editors or, I mean, careful who you add as an admin, but you could add moderators, advertisers, or analysts. Editors obviously will be able to post and do stuff like that. Moderators can look at the comments and, you know, filter out the bad ones. Advertisers, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then an analyst can just see your insights. So it's good to add other people so you're not the only one doing all of the work here. And also so you're not giving out your personal, pro, your personal Facebook account to people. If you just add them, it's just a lot easier to do stuff. People in other pages, not going to get into that. Preferred audiences, ad limits, branded content. These are all things that we really don't need to get into right now. See, branded content. Let's go back to where we were. Then we have Instagram down here. You can connect your Instagram. It's honestly really easy to do. A lot of people ask me how to connect an Instagram to a Facebook business page. If you just go into page settings, connect account, and it just has you sign into Instagram, it's, it's that easy to do. And then once you're signed in, it'll just be connected. And this will allow you to upgrade your Instagram account to a business account or a creator account. And that'll give you a lot of other things to have buttons on your Instagram account, to see your insights, to run ads, like the end, the options are definitely nearly endless there. And so I highly recommend you do that. We can connect WhatsApp as, as well. We can go to featured cross pointing. The rest of the stuff down here is a little bit less exciting page management history. You can see like what actually happened down here. If you, you know, someone on your team made some changes, you can see what happened. So you know exactly how to go back and, and see what what's different if your page suddenly is not performing well or if it suddenly is performing really well. 
So those are the settings down here. Activity log uh, is going to just show you like what you posted, stuff like that. And we can go on back to our, so we'll just go back to our page now, and that'll bring us to right here. And so that's everything on the left side then. Now on the top, we'll see that we can actually see the drop down. If you have more than one Facebook business page, you can easily go through here and you know select different ones and manage those. And then looking at your page, you have a couple options here as well. So you can go and view it as a visitor. Again, I highly recommend you do this to make sure that your photos are not cut off, they all look normal, everything looks like it should, and you can see everything as you want to. So you see right here how many followers, our description, send a message, and then the categories that we're in. They can like the page, they can send us a message, and they can go down and see the post that we have. So viewing it, it does look pretty good. Everything seems to be in order exactly as we want it. And so now it's actually showing four tabs for some reason, but we can see the rest if we hit the more menu and going back to home, that's what we have. So let's exit viewing that. And the next thing you wanna do is actually go and start adding some content. So you can go and create posts and your first post, the one thing that a lot of people forget, and I see this all the time, one of the big reasons that a lot of businesses don't succeed and then others you know, fix this problem and they do succeed, it's when you're posting content, you have to remember that the goal of it is not just to advertise because people are going to follow you voluntarily. If you're, if you're paying for an ad, you can make this whatever you want. But if you're trying to get people to organically like your content, follow your page, they're not gonna follow it just to see what your daily like advertisements are. Instead, you really wanna make sure you're adding value. And there's a couple ways to do that. One of them is you could provide some entertaining photos or videos. So, I mean, the easiest example would be like if you are a petting zoo, posting videos of your animals doing animal stuff is something that is extremely shareable on Facebook. And I mean, some people really took advantage of this. If you guys remember, I think it was like the pig and, and the goat in the water. Like if you ever saw that video, that's an example of somebody gaming the system and just trying to use this and advertise and make content that was shareable to help their own business. Now, similarly, you could make other things that are also entertaining. So if you're like a bait shop and you wanna post pictures of people catching their fish, then whoever you know, whoever's in that photo is probably going to share that photo with their friends. So it's a great way to gain more exposure like that. And then thirdly, you could be sharing some deals that are like Facebook only exclusives. So if it's like, hey, today we're giving out free cheesesteaks, but you need to show us that you're following us on Facebook, then it could be a great way to, you know, again, gain some more engagement, or you can have little contests, things like that. But just remember that whenever you make a post, you want to be providing value in some way. So you're not just saying, like, come buy our cheesesteaks. We make really good cheesesteaks. This one's our Philly cheesesteak, right? Like, that stuff's going to get annoying. Nobody's going to follow that. And even if they do follow it, if people don't engage after a few attempts of Facebook showing it, eventually you're just going to have dead followers where your posts are not even being shown on the home pages of other people on Facebook. So that's my spiel about posting different things that are providing value. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you in this video. That's really all you need to know about creating a Facebook business page. It's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to do. So now is a good time to get started on that. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, go on down, leave a comment below. And if you have, you know, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.